Today on Shut Up and Sit Down, we're looking at mind management, said to us by publishers Matigo, a game of psychic warfare. Which is fitting, because this manual looks like it's trying to give you a migraine. What on earth is going on now? But don't worry, because I'm sure mind management will make more sense once we look at it all set up. Oh no! Set up, mind management looks more confusing. Naturally, there's a grid of Zanzibar, as well as numbered brains, a black ops dolphin, and meeples within meeples. If Franz Kafka was alive today and embarked on a particularly bizarre career change, she might make a board game that looks a bit like this one. What are we looking at here? Who is this for? Spoiler, it's for me. I had an unusually terrific time playing Mind Management. Ten years of reviewing board games has left me with a heart the size and colour of a sultana. And yet Mind Management had me making sounds like a percussive instrument. I'm talking claps! Yes! Slaps! <laughs> gasps! Ooh. And whatever this is. Well if I- uh, wait- Ah! Uh, uh, ah! Uh, uh. I'm here to tell you that I think Mind Management is a terrific board game. Let me show you how it works. Mind management is what's called a hidden movement game, a genre of board games that ask, what if hide and seek was designed by a point dexter? In mind management, one player, known as the recruiter, sits behind this screen with their own private, miniature version of the main board, and is going to be plotting their hidden movement around town. Each turn of the game, the recruiter has to take a step without doubling back on themselves or moving into a space that has a rogue agent in it. And these four rogue agents are controlled by a whole team of one to four players working together to hunt the recruiter down. If the psychic secret agent lasts 10 turns without being caught, they win. And let me tell you, if you've never played a board game that comes with a screen before, this is intoxicating, like being a man with a van, but you're a bean with a screen. Although mostly you'll feel like a rat in a trap, spending your turn making just one little notch on the board showing where you've gone, and then experiencing the queasily exciting sensation of listening to a whole team of players use all of the deduction and prediction and psychology at their disposal to hunt you down. Here's the good news. The tools that the team of rogue agents have to catch you are incredibly annoying to use. If you are a rat, it's like they're trying to catch you with a lasso. Let's look at the game from their perspective. As a rogue agent, on each of your turns you can move an agent on the board up to two spaces and perform one action, which will always give you some information and usually feel kind of bad. If you spend your turn using the ask action, you pick a feature in your square and ask the secret recruiter player if they've visited one or more of those features. If they have, they then have to place a red step token on one of them. Or if they haven't been to any of that feature, you then get to paper the board with notes, reminding you that the recruiter wasn't there during this time, which immediately has the effect of making your deductions look a bit Pepe Sylvia. If a rogue agent instead chooses to take the reveal action on their turn, they take the footprint in their location and ask the recruiter when they were there. The answer might be ages ago or moments ago. But to win, the rogue agents actually need to catch the recruiter, which means spending your turn taking the capture action, which means you walk to a space and spend your whole turn going, are you in this space right now? And if the recruiter is, the rogue agents win in a tremendous adrenaline rush, but if they're not there right now, this action does nothing. This win condition is pretty common in hidden movement games, and it is one of my favourite game mechanics ever. Because the Seeking team has to put everything on the line to take the capture action, it means that they become likably gutsy. And so if the game ends this way, it feels narratively satisfying. So, that's the genre that we call Hidden movement. Now, to those of you thinking, ooh, this is a logic puzzle. It is, and it's a great one. But to those of you thinking, oh no, this is a logic puzzle. Please consider stopping watching this video because you haven't heard the half of it. Quite literally, we're only halfway through the rules explanation and I don't want to be responsible for what happens to your brain. 
So, the recruiter actually has another way to win, namely recruiting potential psychics in Zanzibar, hence recruiter. At the start of the game, the recruiter is secretly dealt three features where they can recruit people, and these appear on the board five times each. Each time the recruiter passes one of these features, they recruit someone, and if they recruit 12 people, they win early. But every other turn, the recruiter has to reveal how many recruits they've collected. So the rogue agents slowly develop this super bizarre data set where they know how many of these three features the recruiter has passed, but not what those features are. The recruiter also has four bodyguards known as immortals on the board. And each time the recruiter moves, they can also publicly move an immortal. Now the team of rogue agents are not allowed to use the ask action to ask about a feature that currently has an immortal standing on it, but also there are always two public immortal recruiting features in front of the recruiter's screen, and if two immortals are ever stood on one of those features, the recruiter gets a free extra recruitment and the card is replaced. Is your brain starting to melt like candle wax yet? Because there's more! The rogue agents actually have a fourth action to choose from. They can spend their turn shaking down an immortal, which lets them move that immortal one space, but also lets them guess one of the three secret recruiting features behind the screen. And if they're right, the recruiter loses it forever. But wait! The recruiter also has some special movement powers. The two temples on the board let them move to and from them diagonally, and the recruiter also has a special mind slip power that lets them leap across the board in a style unique to the character they chose, and the rogue agents don't know what character that was, so they also have to deduce that. But wait! The four rogue agents each have their own special power, like tossing immortals around like sacks of rice, or something called psychic crosshairs? But wait! The rogue agents have a, a dolphin. But wait! Walls are in the game also as well. There's walls. Listen, the long and short of it is that this is a fantastic board game with one extremely cool extra secret feature that I haven't even written into the script until this timestamp, so that's all for later. But it does have one big flaw, which is that while it is maybe the most aesthetically striking board game I've seen in years, and for that reason it is a real treasure to place in my collection, this whole design is also like willfully repellent. The big flaw with board games as an art form is that somebody has to learn them. That person then has to teach them, and for as long as the game lasts, you then all have to remember them. And usually, the theme of a game and its art design are the two big ways that designers and publishers have of helping players to predict and to retain rules. To which mind management says, Yeah, I'm actually based on a cool graphic novel of the same name. And you're like, oh, nice, but how does that help us with what we were talking about? To which the game says, hmm, uh, we, we were, uh, we were, what, what, what were we talking about? Sorry, I was f***ing around with chromatically opposite colours. So, unless you or your friends happen to be a fan of the comic, mind management's off-the-wall art and theme, actively make it harder to learn the game. Which is because the person who did the art for this board game is Matt Kint, the creator and artist of the comic, which is awesome. But Matt is not a board game illustrator, which is why this game's art design is amazing and unusual and of no help whatsoever. The card backs barely help you to remember what deck that card is from, and the art on the front of the cards all feel like they're only stopping by your house on a way to another cooler house that probably isn't having a board game night. How am I supposed to remember that the ad man's elemental advertising lets them move orthogonally, while the pipe girl's smoke screen means she of course moves diagonally? The fountains and the pools on the board look really similar, as do the buses and the tuk-tuks. For that matter, why are the tuk-tuks down in the reference as thought couriers? I've played this game six times and I still have to work to remember the name of the recruiter and the rogue agents. Those are the two sides in this game. Honestly, I could probably forgive mind management seeming as obtuse as a bag of elbows if it at least had an absolutely airtight and simple manual, but I'm not in love with the manual either. There are loads of examples of play, so you're probably not gonna play mind management wrong after reading the manual, but it's not a great reference. It's so busy. 
But listen, unless you and your friends already find teaching board games is a near insurmountable task, this is just me nitpicking on the subject of mind management's biggest flaw. This is not a difficult game to learn, it's just harder to learn than it had to be. And more importantly, after you've taken your first few turns in your very first game, the sheer excitement and drama of this design will carry you and your friends giggling and shouting towards comfortable familiarity. The rush of playing as the recruiter has to be felt to be believed. You're at once incredibly powerful and totally outnumbered. And while you're invisible, you also get to be the center of attention at the table. And while this can be perhaps a little anxiety inducing if they are tremendously close to figuring out where you are, if they don't have a strong idea where you are, hearing them discuss where you might be or what you might be thinking is like honey dripping in your ear. Ah, oh, I can't get enough of it. That is, unless you're playing mind management as the almost totally silent two-player game, at which point the game takes on a level of unsmiling stress that wouldn't be out of place in a prison. Meanwhile, the rogue agents are playing this lovely medium-weight deduction game that's really tense because they're always racing to stop two separate win conditions, which is too many people being recruited or them just running out of time. But always with the rich satisfaction of stalking a little bit closer to your prey every turn. There's just something so moorish about starting with an empty board and then filling it with clues and then connecting those clues up. You feel like a dog that's herring down alleyways after someone's sent. Let's imagine as the rogue agents, you took your first two actions and the recruiter plays step tokens. See, I'm still trying to remember the name recruiter. The recruiter plays step tokens there and there. So you know they've been to those two spaces, but you don't know which direction they were walking. So then you go to this space and you ask. And the recruiter says, oh yeah, I was there as my third move. But that means third move, second move, first move. They can't have been going this way, which means they have to be going this way. Third move, fourth move, fifth move, sixth move. They've only made seven moves, which means the furthest they could be is here, here, here. And then quickly bring in all of the rogue agents, wall them off, because don't forget that the recruiter can't move into a space that has a rogue agent in it right now. All of which makes mind management a solid hidden movement game. But what makes it a great one for all of this box's outsized craziness is simple, subtle balance. For starters, games of mind management are never too short or too long, nor are they saggy in the middle. You start, they're exciting, and then you're often done in under an hour, making them so consistently entertaining that upon finishing a game, I often wanted to swap roles and try again. But even more importantly, if you are someone like me, mind management is balanced such that for all of the crunchy deduction that the rogue agents have to do, the game does not give you enough time to figure out, okay, if they were there, then there, and they can't have gone there. Oh my God, they're definitely on this square right now. The game always stops just short of letting you deduce all the way to where the recruiter is, which means this game is constantly leaving the solid ground of mathematical deduction, like a cool skateboard is flying off a ramp and entering the sexy airborne zone of blind guesswork. We know they either went this way or this way. What would you do if you were the recruiter? I think they went this way. And that's the key word, I think. And in this game being a blend of this tricky and unique deduction puzzle, but also this emotional game where you can win just by playing from your gut. Mind management is up there with my other favorite hidden movement game. The significantly simpler and cheaper shut up and sit down favorite, Whitehall Mystery. Now neither one of these games are perfect. Neither fixes the big floor of hidden movement as a genre, which is that in these games, if one side is doing very well, the experience can be monumentally disheartening for the other side. Nobody likes hunting for someone who totally outfoxes them, nor is it a great deal of fun to be a fox who is immediately caught in a blind alleyway and strung up. But what if I told you that mind management had one more trick up its sleeve? What if I were to show you something that takes this game from having the not unreasonable recommended retail price of £50 dollars to being a steal at £50 dollars? What if I told you that this game came with a little expansion? And then what if I corrected myself to tell you that this game comes with 14 of them? You're looking at what the publishers of Mind Management call The Shift System. Which even has its own logo. And if The Shift System was any less awesome, I might call this branding a little pompous. But it's so clever, I'd be happy if I saw The Shift System in basically any game. Shut Up and Sit Down is not going to spoil what's in any of these secret boxes, but we will tell you how it works. So when you finish a game of mind management, the losing side gets to open a box with a new expansion module that benefits 
their side. So you get this balm after getting your ass kicked in mind management that you get to open a pack. You can look forward to being even more powerful next game, but everybody around the table gets to see some new content. So you've got like all the obvious benefit, which is that this is exciting. It soothes the losing player, but also it means mind management gets more complicated as you get to grips with it. But then how the, the shift system works is that each time a side loses a game, they kind of get like more and more modules they're allowed to play with. And as you unlock more and more of these modules, you get a kind of draft. So if I've been losing a bunch of games, maybe I'm playing with three modules that benefits my side, then the good guys might get to choose one module. So as you play, mind management does get more complicated, but players also get more and more options of what tools they want to slip into their kind of deduction utility belt before the game begins. So that's Mind Management, a great game with a slightly tricky teach, but also one of the most impressive aesthetics I've ever seen. I love Letters to the Source material and has this absolute glut of extras. I will say that nothing in this uh, expansion set is gonna change your mind if you don't like the base game, but if you do like the base game, oh, it makes it awfully exciting to play and explore. It's basically a legacy game is what we've got going on here. Is somebody there? Ooh, my phone. Hello? Hi, Quins. Uh, is it okay for me to borrow the copy of Mind Management so that someone could do the review? Ow, I just reviewed Mind Management. Um, that's weird. Ah, uh, well, I guess it's done now, so it doesn't, doesn't matter, matter who was supposed to, to do it. it. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Ava, have you done the review of my management that I asked you for? It's supposed to be on the site like any day now. Oh, no, that won't be a problem, Matt. It, it, all the work is done. It'll be on the site before you know it. Well, so long as somebody did it, I don't suppose it matters. You have, you have a great day now, Ava. Bye-bye. <laughs> Ha 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 